What would you say if I asked you to look at your neighbor and tell me what you see? Studies show that on average we encounter around 20 people a day. Men, women, children, the elderly, and people from all walks of life are on some type of journey that makes their existence meaningful. One of my favorite pastimes is to people watch. I wonder what their life is like. Are they happy, fearful, excited, mournful? Are they wealthy or just getting by? In love or running from it? No matter how hard I try, I don't see them for who they are. I can only imagine make-believe scenarios of what or who they might be. Social media has added another dimension to how we see people. Digital imagery brings another face to those around us. Perception seems to outweigh reality at times. The reality experienced by one person may be characterized by privilege, while that of others is marked by hardship and turmoil. Some of us were born with physical limitations or ailments that developed over time, taken away from our experience of the world around us. Today, I'd like to share some reflections regarding a blind man and his encounter with Jesus. The Bible only identifies him as a blind man. Time and blindness reduced him to being recognized by the one thing he lacked, vision. We don't know if he was a father, a brother, an uncle, a fisherman, or just a lowly beggar. Everything about him, his hopes and fears, and all the quirks that make us unique were hidden behind his blindness. Who was he before losing his vision? His desire for sight eclipsed all other considerations. He simply wished to see the world once more. In biblical times, the blind were grouped with cripples and lepers and were outcasts of society. They were menaces to passers-by on whom they relied on for charity. How long was he out there begging, wondering if he'd go hungry another night? A spark of hope must have ignited when the news of a Galilean preacher performing miracles, including restoring sight to the blind, arrived in his town. Maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to see again. This particular miracle stands out. Initially, it seemed like it hadn't worked. However, it revealed something extraordinary. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 22 through 26, the story reads like this. And he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees, walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. The story states that some people brought him to this miracle worker and begged him to touch him. The value of true friendship is priceless. They pleaded on his behalf when he couldn't. The community rallied around him, got him off of his dirty begging mat, and led him to get his sight back. The measure of a thriving community is often determined by the treatment of its most vulnerable members. True friendship is characterized by a genuine love for the individual and not top-down charity. Look at your friend group. What do you see? Are you surrounded by those who have your best interest at heart? Do they lift you up when you're down, celebrate your victories, give you a shoulder to lean on, and provide hope when those dark clouds of life begin to emerge? The blind man had those types of people around him. Hearing about the rabbi immediately made them think about their blind friend. They undoubtedly heard of instances where people were healed by his word or simply his touch. They asked him to touch him so that he'd be healed. 
The way God achieves a desired outcome may not be as you imagined. Have you ever prayed for something and planned how he was supposed to answer it? In the story, the initial touch appeared to fall short. Some interpret this to mean that some healings require time, while others suggest that it shows the true power of healing lies not in the technique, but in the person. But was it truly that? Taking nothing away from either viewpoint, I think it was much deeper. What struck me was what he said about seeing men as trees. If I were to look into this statement allegorically, I would ask myself, what do we use trees for? Well, we simply reduce them down to mere resources. When we don't see our fellow men with the proper perspective, we risk degrading, exploiting, and ultimately destroying them. Was Jesus cautioning us against treating people as objects and mere resources, reminding us instead to recognize them as fellow image bearers of God? Politicians mislead the people, crafting false narratives for votes while doing the complete opposite, fleecing their constituents with taxes and slowly eroding the power afforded to us by God. I see men as trees. Involving our sons and daughters in foreign wars in the name of profit, disguised under the pretext of spreading democracy and human rights. I see men as trees. Providing essential resources and monies to other countries while over 500,000 homeless Americans roam our city streets. I see men as trees. Opening our schools to twisted and perverted curriculums, fostering gender confusion, and then arming them with a victim's mentality. I see men as trees. Corporate greed fills their stomachs with record-breaking profits, while the people struggle to buy groceries and basic necessities. I see men as trees. Drug dealers flood the streets with lethal substances, while human traffickers hurt people across state and international lines like cattle. I see men as trees. What do they see when looking at us? A voter? A taxpayer? A soldier? A fighter? A convert? A victim? A profit margin? A tree? While all of this sounds intriguing, and in spite of my rant, I don't believe it's about this at all. The mystery is unlocked in the story's context. Before healing the blind man, Jesus' disciples had witnessed him feed 4,000 people with seven loaves of bread and a few fish. Prior to that, he fed 5,000 people with only five loaves. They had walked with him for some time now, witnessing the wondrous works of his hand, sitting under his teachings and watching as he began to reveal who he is and why he came. He had authority over nature and dark spirits, and even life and death itself. Jesus, the healer of men, connected his teachings and preachings with dunamis, which translates to works of power. While some were in awe, others, like the Pharisees and followers of Herod, were consumed with the murderous spirit and began plotting to kill Jesus. They feared that if the people started following him, the Romans would come and take away their place, position, and nation. The disciples witnessed his miracles and believed, yet they didn't understand how he would be scorned by humanity and rejected by the nation mentioned by the prophet Isaiah. They couldn't accept that the people would hide their faces from him in the hour of his death. They were walking with the lamb who was set to be slain. After feeding the 4,000, the Pharisees approached Jesus and began questioning him, asking for a sign. The scripture reflects that Jesus sighed deeply in his spirit and responded that no sign would be given to this generation. After leaving, he and his disciples boarded a ship and the disciples forgot to bring bread. Jesus charged them saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. While Jesus was warning them of their pernicious influence, the disciples thought he was referring to them not bringing any bread. And this is where I believe 
The healing of the blind man was not only for the benefit of him receiving his sight again, but a visual parable of the spiritual blindness of his disciples. Jesus knew they thought he was referring to them lacking bread. He reminds them of the miracle of feeding thousands with just seven loaves. Do you still not see or understand, he says? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see? I believe this miracle isn't about failing to see our fellow man clearly, but rather failing to recognize Jesus for who he truly is.